It's a common experience for college students. Someone asks, so, what's your major? And you say English, or history, or philosophy, or something else in the humanities. And they reply, what will you do with that? And then the anxiety starts. Did I make a huge mistake? Will I ever get a job? But what's the reality behind these fears? To find out how students feel about the majors they pick and how they make those decisions, we talked to three current undergrads at the University of Connecticut, all members of the Humanities House Learning Community, a group designed for students interested in the humanities. Hi, I'm Donald. I am an art major, and I'm currently a sophomore in the Humanities House. Hi, I'm Avery. I'm a current sophomore in the Humanities House, and I'm majoring in psychology with a minor in human development and family sciences. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a sophomore at the Humanities House. I'm an English major and a studio art minor. First, we asked the students if they were worried about their future career prospects. Sam said that she did have some concerns. I haven't given much thought to what I'm going to be doing like permanently in the future. I considered like looking into teaching or something like oh, something of that sort but um I don't have like a like a tangible I guess like singular thing that I have in mind I guess I'm just doing I'm doing the English major and like pursuing like this track because I'm interested in what it has to offer I like the content I like the classes and I'm really just like studying what I really like to do I just don't know where that's gonna lead me in the future Avery too worried that humanities majors can get stereotyped. I asked Avery what she thinks people think when they hear someone is a humanities major. I feel like for me, I think of something that has to do with a major that's focusing on something that's people-related, very caring, very applicable to a lot of different areas. But I feel like you, if you're interacting with a lot of STEM majors, not to stereotype across the board, but just in my experience and from people I know that go to other schools, it's sometimes like humanities majors are looked down upon because they're not we're focusing on a natural science or specific equations or things like that. And so I feel like they kind of overlook the almost human aspect of it. And so I feel like that's probably the saddest part of the stereotype itself. For an expert view, we went to UConn's Office of Undergraduate Research. My name is Dr. Human, Dr. Micah Human, and I work as director of the Office of Undergraduate Research. I asked Human whether having a humanities degree was a bad career move. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to put a lot of bias towards that. I, I think it's, it's well, I don't think it's bad. I'll put it that way. It's not bad. But I'm also going to argue that it's not necessarily just a humanities degree that's a good degree. They're, they are good, and they offer uh, a quality education. I think the problem is, is too many students don't choose a humanities degree because they think it's bad. Right. So I'm not going to say that choosing a social science major or a STEM major is a bad decision. Um, and but I think not choosing to get that humanities degree because you feel like you're concerned it's going to be a bad decision is the wrong way to choose a major. And I think so many students feel that pressure to choose a degree based on myths that exist in the world that tell them, oh, a humanities degree, you can't get a real job with that. Right. You'll be working back at no offense to anyone that works at these places, but a fast food, you know, or Starbucks. Right. You're not working at a career trajectory job. And that's just simply not the case. And again, it's based on myths and not facts. And that's the real concern. And that's why I keep trying to put this message out there um, is that I don't want to put a bias that, oh, everyone should be choosing a humanities degree because I don't think so. There's, uh, there's many other great majors, but it's concerning how many since I talk to and have spoken to that don't choose a humanities degree based on myths that they've been told either by family or by the media. And that's the biggest concern. Family and friends do seem to be a big influence on what majors students choose. Avery and Donald both told us that they felt supported in choosing their degrees by family members who worked in the same fields. I've been really lucky. So I'm majoring in psychology. And so I've been really lucky to grow up in an environment where my mom's a psychologist. My old babysitter when I was younger is now a psychologist. So I've had a lot of mentors growing up um, that have kind of showed me that path. When it comes to a career, especially in the arts, it's pretty up in the air. But thankfully, I've always, like, I've grown up in a household where my parents are pretty supportive of me going into whatever field I want. My father is an artist. He works with wood and makes furniture and renovates houses, but in a very artistic way. And my mother is a 
an elementary or middle school teacher, and she's pretty acquainted with children wanting to go off into the world and do their own thing, so they completely understand. Sam, too, said that her family didn't put pressure on her to pursue a course of study she wouldn't enjoy. Uh, well, it wasn't a pressure, it wasn't a sort of pressure to become an English major, I feel like. I feel like that's not a thing that people do. People aren't just like, oh, you better you better study English. I don't think that's that's said very frequently. My parents wanted my parents wanted me to get like an education and get a degree. And obviously they want me to be like financially stable. But they never really explicitly like laid out like a degree like option. And when I was growing up, I just gravitated more towards like the the English, like writing, reading, drawing things like that. So they saw that I was interested in specific things. And after a while, they just got used to the notion of me being an English major. But human pointed out to me that I was talking to students who'd already decided to focus on the humanities, either through their choice of major or through living in a learning community like Humanities House. He says he sees lots of students in business or STEM or other fields that maybe would have liked to do a humanities degree but felt pressured to go in a different direction. Because the question, as soon as a student start, says they're going to college, the first question they all get asked, and they get asked by every single person, is what's your major? So right then and there, there's puts a pressure that you have to choose because you've already said you're going to college, right? So because you, you know, applied to go to college, and you're going, one that you need to know, and that if you're exploring, that's somehow bad too. And I don't believe that at all. I think exploring actually puts you ahead from uh, your other students. And so... A lot of parents here, I think data, as we know, data is important, but data can also be twisted to to kind of get you what you want. And one of the things I talk about is I think when you start making something and putting these restrictions on it, and, and I'll pick on the school of business here, when you say you have to have a certain GPA, when you say you have to uh, meet certain credentials, like you have to be involved. So with the GPA, with the involvement, all of a sudden you create this mystique around it. Right. That, oh, well, you got to apply to get in and not everyone gets in. And and I think what you then do is people are missing why they don't get into school like a business. Right. So they and a lot of the students will end up choosing a social science or humanities degree. And then they'll go to apply for a job. And guess who they're going to blame when they don't get the job? They're going to they're not going to blame themselves because who wants to blame themselves for something? Right. They're going to blame their major because that's the low hanging fruit. And so what you hear, I think social media a lot too, is you'll hear people, I've, I've seen this, you know, in different videos, it's like, oh, I didn't get this job because I, you know, I got a philosophy degree, and, you know, and I didn't, I, I chose philosophy because I didn't get into school of business. I need to pick a major. So I just randomly picked it. Well, there's red flags all over that. So one, they're missing the point of why they didn't get into school of business, right? So either their GPA wasn't good. So GPA, we can inform maybe they didn't have great time management, um, study habits, uh, written communication, those things, and, and or they weren't involved, right? And so again, we know involvement is a big piece to getting jobs. So if they never got involved and they just chose a random degree, like a humanities degree, and they didn't do anything with it, they didn't get involved, they then have this blame. So then you start seeing this perpetuated on social media and other resources um, that are, exist out there, but are based on data and facts. And then the message starts getting that a humanities degree is worthless. One of the big myths human sees is the belief that there is a one-to-one relationship between a major and a career path, i.e. you can only go to medical school with a physical sciences degree. And therefore, if you want to be a doctor, you have to know and plan for that from day one in college. Or if you want to be successful in business, you have to get a business degree. This just isn't true, he says. And he has the data to prove it. We'll use business and um, med school. So if you're looking at one of the top master's in business programs in the country, if not the world, is the School of Wharton at UPenn. You know, they're going to be CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And uh, if you look at their just their current cohort of students, less than a third have an undergraduate degree in business. Right, more than a third have an undergraduate degree in humanities, and several have like STEM majors too. Um, engineering is a popular one now for going then going on to get your MBA. Um, and so, what again? What they're saying there is that no, a business degree isn't required to go on to business school and, as a graduate program. Um, UConn will say the same thing too. So, if you want to stay at UConn and go on to their you know business master's programs, they don't care what your major is either. What they're looking for, again, is how have you gotten involved with your undergraduate experience? What else have you done besides go to class? 
Um, and the same thing with med school. So again, med school, we can look at the matriculation rates. And um, again, I can tweak the question to say percentages. So if we look at percentages, humanities this year, again, and it has changed the past couple of years, we've seen math and statistics um, have higher ones. We've seen the physical sciences be higher. But then before that, again, humanities was the highest again. So every three years now, I'm seeing the humanities jump up as the highest. So the highest matriculation rate uh, percentage wise, meaning they're getting accepted and they're going on to medical school. And then if you can look at the MCAT, which is the most important test you take to get into med school, and it is very weighed heavily as they're you know, making decisions. And there's, you're showing that humanities students are scoring higher than biological sciences, which is the most common major going on to med school. And again, it's a great major. I'm never going to say biology is a bad major. The problem is it's not a great major for everyone. So what should students think about when deciding on a major? Human says students should think about what really interests them. The reality is, is we are more successful in things we're interested in overall. Yes, there's the individuals out there that can excel in everything, right? Even if they're not interested in it, they just excel in that. Good for them. That's not the norm. That's not the majority of us. And so when we do something we're interested in, we excel in it, which means we're going to then talk to the faculty because we're interested in the research that they're doing. We're going to then join clubs that are around the major because we're interested in it. We're going to maybe do a broad around our major because we're interested in it. And so all those things I just mentioned are starting to build up those transferable skills. You're doing research with faculty now in your field. That's, that's going to build up those transferable skills. And they're going to be a great letter of recommendation for you for graduate school or for a job, both of which are going to need recommendation letters and references. And so too often, they're just hearing that, oh, uh, you know, again, as we bring up business again, I, I want to go into business, so I need a major in business. And that's just simply not the facts. Human's favorite metaphor is that college is like a phone. Specifically, a big research school like UConn is an advanced smartphone. But too often, human fears, students treat it like an old style flip phone. Uh, I look at a place like University of Connecticut, and, and I truly see it as the newest iPhone. So we'll say iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the problem is students get here and they treat it like a flip phone. So they don't go to professor's office hours. They don't join clubs. They don't do abroad. They don't do undergraduate research. Right? They, 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 so what, basically what you're doing there is you're taking your iPhone 15 Pro Max, and all you're doing is making phone calls with it. You're not taking pictures, you're not FaceTiming, you're not taking videos, you're not downloading apps, you're not texting, you're not on TikTok, you're not on any of those things, not looking on the internet. You, so you might as well just have a flip phone. And I think students, when you can relate it to something that such as that, I think they can hopefully start to make that connection. I do see students coming here and treating like a flip phone. And my point is, why are you spending so much money on, on a flip phone? Right. If you're going to treat like a flip phone, I, and I mean this, it goes somewhere else. If, if you're really just here to get a degree and get out, there's lots of great schools around the country or the state that's much cheaper and you can just get that degree and get out. And, and that's it. The point of UConn and, and, and other universities like this, but University of Connecticut specifically, the reason we have an undergraduate pro research program, the reason we have education, the reason we have all these clubs, the reason we have the Humanities Institute, right, all these different institutes is because we've realized College is more than just a degree now. This is a message Human delivers in presentations across Yukon, including a recent talk for the Humanities Institute. Avery, the sophomore member of Humanities House, told us hearing his words helped reassure her that she could follow her interests. I actually heard Micah's presentation when I was when I visited for I think it was admitted student day, and so I was sitting with my mom and we were listening to it, and it was just kind of a really nice thing to hear right before going into college because I knew I was going into ACEs, but to have that kind of knowledge of like, yeah, it really doesn't matter what I study right now. I can just focus on what I'm passionate about and kind of go from there. So I was lucky to have seen that presentation before I got to college too. 